This is my watt balance. I'm going to give you a short tour of it and uh, show some of the features if you want to call them that. Uh, so let's start here on the left hand side and we will see here is my focusing going to work kind of sounds like it it seems like it is okay so i did deviate from nist's paper a little bit i did go with a lab jack uh a to d device it's the u12 uh I didn't want to spend as much money as I did for, what was it, the U6? I can't remember which one it was in the paper that they said you could use instead of the National. Uh, so originally I was thinking of doing an Arduino. Then I decided that this was going to be complicated enough without also trying to implement Arduino, you know, reading analog voltages. It wasn't going to have enough resolution and accuracy with the Arduino anyways. I'd have to build another A to D chip up to get the uh, precision I needed and I didn't want to take the time so I popped for this uh, U12 and uh, it works pretty good I did ne did necessitate me deviating from the uh, schematic some significant amount uh, I didn't do the lot balance bilateral in other words I can't measure from either side I can measure one one coil, this coil here, which I, you know, I'll call coil A, is the actual uh, coil used during force mode to measure the uh, the weight, and then the other coil over here, which I'll call coil B, is just used for the motor to drive coil A up and down in velocity mode, and that simplified what I needed for uh, controls. Uh, and it seems to have worked out, I think. I still have some unanswered questions. I'm still working on the accuracy. Uh, but uh, I'm going to do future videos showing that anyway, so I won't go into that right now. So anyways, that's the U12. Then the actual frame of the uh, watt balance is made out of, uh, well, it's 8020 extrusion, but it's not the, the, the big 8020. It's their smaller I'd say it's one inch by one inch aluminum extrusion. Uh, I use that for the frame. Uh, I'll go down in here into the end of the balance beam. And there you can see, well, I was hoping that, uh, uh oh, I hope I just didn't screw up my video. I think I did, but um, not getting the focus that I want really I don't know why it's annoying it doesn't seem to be auto focusing so I'll come back and do a little short section on that detail so I can zoom right in I'll do a gross overview and then show you the pivot and stuff so anyways 80 20 there with a balance beam uh, 3,000 turns of 32 gauge magnet wire or 36 gauge I can't remember now but Magnet wire, 3,000 turns on each coil. Uh, junction block there. Uh, I did buy a fidget uh, analog bolt out for channel analog out device to provide the control voltages and stuff. And the red board next to that is a uh, it's just a spark fun uh, three and a half and five volt power supply that's powering the lasers. I have a, uh, a regular uh, regular uh, di laser diode module here, providing the reference beam. Goes over to a fold mirror because I'm in this little cubby. I fold it out and I fold it across to over here onto a scale where I'm measuring millimeters I do all my measuring in millimeters uh, and jury rigged 8020 holding it up in the air well that's an old early 20th century bench shaper that I'm rebuilding <laughs> just as an aside 
Oh, let's see. Yeah, up here I have a... I used a mechanical coil because that's what I had. I used a mechanical coil, and it's a 24-volt coil. So that's a 24-volt power supply. The white box behind it is 24-volt power supply. They use for switching the, uh, the relay in and out. Uh, and that's used during switching from uh, velocity to force and vice versa. And then back here, I have another uh, laser diode line module with a salvaged photodiode in the back, as you can see, providing the uh, feedback for the uh, PID control. I do use PID. I wrote the software. I did not use NIST software because... Uh, I wanted to use my Linux box to, to control this, so I wrote it. I wrote my own control program in uh, Python, which again I'll do that in a in a later video. Uh, describe that. I'm going to go and maybe make. I don't know if I'll do it one more video because it'll be pretty lengthy. Maybe I'll do two more, or even three, breaking it up into manageable chunks about what I found, problems I've had with this, and. Uh, Etc. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the record here for a minute so I can switch to manual focus, and I'll uh, come back and show a couple more detail close-up images with manual focus. I'll be right back, and I'm back. So this is a close-up of my uh, the the uh, balance uh, of the uh, watt balance. Uh, I basically that's a uh, the a knife that's a knife edge I made out of a uh, perforator pin that you would use in a punch and die assembly eighth inch diameter and I ground it down to a knife edge on either side I think you can see the little pie shape there with the knife edge that's high speed M2 steel probably I don't know but it's hard probably at least 70 Rockwell C and then uh, on that I have a hardened hardened tool steel titanium nitride at hardened tool steel block that that rides on and with uh, four hardened dowel pins providing alignment and guidance for the beam at least you know lets me bank it against the rear set of pins and use that as a reference to get it lined up and let's see here that is a bubble level there and uh, see if I can get that in focus better. There we go. Darn it. There, that's better. More better. Yeah, so I have bubble level there. Coarse weight adjustment for balance. Bubble level slides, but actually, it's the vial slides in the channel provides the level reference as well as a finer adjustment then I have a piece of shim steel here that I've bent up and that's my fine adjustment I can tap that back and forth and bring the balance into uh, reasonably close and I'll just do a close-up of this stuff here because it was out of focus when I showed it again that's the fidget to the right four channel analog out device and the spark fun power supply for the two laser diodes so I think this will be about it for this video. Let me zoom out. There we go. Uh, so far, I've been working on this thing since I think at least January, February of this year. So almost a full year I've been working on this thing on and off. I did drop it for a few weeks in the summer to focus on other things, but... Uh, come back to it and I've been doing some measuring which again I'll uh, fill people in with that detail uh, in a later video just come over here there's the position actually I have the uh, I have it running right now in PID mode that's the command line the Python programs all command line so that's the uh, that's the PID it's in the PID loop right there 
Okay, so anyways, that, I think that'll conclude this uh, this video. And uh, I'm going to run off and get it rendered and shoot it up to YouTube. <laughs>